Welcome to ODA Summit 2022. My name is Neil Peterson, and I'm the president of Open Design Alliance. We're kicking off the summit from the beautiful Missouri River just outside of Omaha, Nebraska, in the central region of the United States. ODA is based here in the U.S., but we serve the broader world community, and we've always been an international organization. This year, we've opened up a new development center in Yerevan, Armenia. Let's check it out. Welcome to Armenia. We're here at the TUMO Center for Creative Technologies outside of Yerevan. Yerevan is ODA's newest development center and it will be the backdrop for most of our presentations today. 2021 was a record year for ODA membership growth with 15 new companies joining us as founding members. These are companies that recognize the value of ODA as a long-term strategic partner. Founding members get a license to our source code, they get priority access to our development team, and they get a voice in determining the strategic direction of our organization. It's a singular value within the industry today. Format support is at the heart of our complete interoperability mission, and our format support will be the focus of the first part of the summit. We've been aggressively expanding our format support in recent years, and I'm pleased to announce that our new STEP SDK is ready for production use. A standard ODA membership now includes STEP, IFC, Land XML, and PRC, making ODA the leader in toolkits for open standards. Our commitment to open standards is for the long term, and we're working closely with Building Smart International, PDES Inc., and other standards organizations to advance the use of open standards throughout the broader industry. While open standards are gaining in popularity, we continue to see strong demand for our support of proprietary standards, including DWG, Revit, DGN, and Navisworks. Open standards are not displacing proprietary formats at this point, rather they are complementing each other. And more and more users want tools that can work with both open and proprietary standards. To meet this demand, we're enhancing the ODA platform with a set of integrated technologies for universal visualization and common data access for any engineering format. As a nonprofit, collaboration is a key part of our mission. Our Strategic Interoperability Group, or SIG program, allows ODA members to collaboratively fund the development of special projects that are not within the scope of the broader ODA mission. Our SIG program is currently funding our work for Revit and Navisworks as well as several other products. We'll have a report today on the status of our newest SIG, Scantabim, which was started in January of this year. The Scantabim SIG is working on the conversion of point cloud data to IFC and Revit. It's an interesting and challenging project and extremely valuable for industry as well. We have a new SIG to announce today for MCAD. The goal of the new MCAD SIG is to develop open and economical support for all major 3D mechanical formats, including SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, and others. We've been getting requests for these formats for years, and now is the time to get this project started. We'll have more details a bit later. Drawings SDK, our DWG support, continues to be our most popular product. We have some exciting advancements with drawings to tell you about today. One of these is the integration of our new constraints engine. This opens up a lot of interesting and sophisticated opportunities for application developers. The new Constraints Engine is part of our core platform available to all members. Thank you for your attention, and we'll move on to the first part of our summit, Format Support. The ODA platform is an integrated set of technologies for the rapid development of engineering applications. 
The platforms support a growing set of formats broken up into three areas. Under CAD, we support DWG and DGN files, PRC or 3D PDF, ACES and Parasolid 3D data. Under BIM, we support IFC, Revit and Navisvox files, DWG-based architecture and civil 3D files, and various set of point cloud formats as part of our new scan to BIM product. And under mechanical, we support STEP and DWG-based AutoCAD mechanical files. In addition, we are working on support for SOLIDWORKS, CATIA and other proprietary formats as part of our new MCAD SDK. The platform also includes services for data access, visualization, web collaboration, publishing and exchange. Let's take a closer look at how ODA member Brixis is leveraging ODA platform to achieve sophisticated integration of Revit and mechanical data in their BricsCAD product line. Brixis is a global provider of the BricsCAD brand of engineering design software. We are relentlessly committed to the success of our customers. To that end, Brixis offers its industry-leading product at a compelling price and with a multitude of customer-centric licensing options. In this demonstration, we'll walk through the process of outfitting an electrical equipment room as part of a housing project upgrade. For background, the update requires the team to remove the outdated static solar array. This frees up space in the penthouse for a lounge and garden. The new layout will consist of a modern solar tracking system, which will be located here in the parking lot and next to the equipment room. Solar tracking panels are roughly 30% more efficient than static setups, and the proximity to the equipment room will shorten the cable lengths and help prevent energy loss. We start with a BIM model of the housing complex with all the structure, mechanical content, and terrain data integrated into a single file. That's important because with an integrated model, we can explore and update the design at any level of detail. We're able to accomplish this integrated design approach by using the ODA BIM RV SDK. As you can see here, some of the equipment, like the electrical cabinet, comes from a manufacturer's online catalog. The catalog data is stored in Autodesk Revit RFA format. Again, our adoption of the ODA developer kit makes it simple to add this data to the model. And you'll notice we get more than just the geometry. The toolkit also ensures that we have the metadata needed to help with our purchasing needs. Once we define the site and selected the equipment and then located inside of our model, it's time to produce the production drawings and purchase lists. The first thing we need to do is to select the appropriate drafting standards for our design. This can vary between different types of customers, so it's very important to have this type of flexibility. Next, we create the layout and begin to add in the dimensions, symbols, and other annotations needed for the fabrication and construction process. We were able to quickly implement the features needed for this drawing because of the use of the ODA Mechanical Developer Toolkit. The final step is to output the drawings. Most suppliers rely on PDF files to help communicate the details of the project while maintaining the IP in a published format. At Brixis, we leverage the ODA Drawings SDK for the critical part of the process. To summarize, at Brixis we strive to provide the best and most accessible solutions for our clients. And we rely on the partnership with ODA to deliver our software. We hope this overview has been informative. Thank you for your attention. Drawings SDK is our industry leading toolkit for DWG and DGN. ODA members use a drawings SDK for a wide range of solutions, from simple data extractors to full-featured CAD editors. 
we support comprehensive two-way conversion between DWG and DGN. This year, we've been working on several major new features, including model documentation, constraints engine integration, trace functionality, and more. Model documentation is a new feature that supports the creation of smart drawings views. These smart views are automatically updated when you make changes to the underlying 3D model. In past years, we've implemented support for the view base, view projected, view section, view detail, and view edit commands. This functionality is based on ODA solid modeler, with no dependencies on any third party technologies. This year, our model documentation development is focused on saving these smart views to DWG in a way that is fully compatible with AutoCAD. It's a complex task because AutoCAD uses Inventor to process model documentation views and saves Inventor data to DWG to support this feature. So we had to implement a subset of Inventor support within Drawings SDK. We've made significant progress with this task the latest drawings SDK can create base and projected views that can be read and correctly recalculated by AutoCAD. And we are currently working on full compatibility for detail and section views. There are two types of constraints in DWG, geometric and dimensional. Geometric constraints define the position of one entity relative to another, and several types of constraints are supported coincident, perpendicular, concentric, horizontal, tangent, and others. Dimensional constraints define the distance or angle between two entities. Move under constraint is the functionality that is applied when a constrained entity is modified. Modifying or transforming a constrained entity will cause appropriate changes to be automatically applied to other entities that are constrained along with the original entity. The latest Drawings SDK implements support for DWG constraints and move under constraints functionality using the new ODA constraint solver. This feature is currently in beta and will be available for production use by the end of the year. We've implemented new parasolid creation functionality within our BRAP Builder component. It supports the export of BRAP data, including colors and materials, to parasolid XT version 9 and 12 for inclusion in DGN files. So, ODA BRAP conversion technology now supports creation of BRAPs from Revit, PRC, ACES embedded to DWG and Parasolid embedded to DGN, as well as all-way conversion between these supported formats. We've implemented a new smoothing algorithm for conversion of D sub D mesh to smooth DB surface with colors and materials. This algorithm reconstructs the NURB surface using mesh data. This functionality allows to convert a mesh to a non-faceted surface. We've implemented imprint functionality to create additional edges within faces of DB solid surface origin. It takes a second object, curve, solid or surface, and imprints intersections of two objects onto the first body. This functionality can be used to split a face into several parts, for example, for visual properties. The trace feature provides integration of markups to DWG. Markups are represented as a separate section in the DWG file and can be modified independently from the main drawings part. ODA uses a similar approach for the universal markup engine supported as part of Visualize SDK and available for all ODA products. We added support for DWG-specific functionality with trace view and trace edit commands in Drawings SDK. Trace edit allows editing of markup geometry placed on the virtual tracing sheet. Trace view allows editing of the main drawings part while dimming the markup geometry. Now we are working a deeper integration of the common ODA markup engine and DWG trace feature. <laughs>
and today we are pleased to announce the first production release with read, write and visualization support. We were able to deliver step quickly by leveraging our sophisticated Express Engine technology which is a part of our SDK work and by using our advanced solid modeling and visualized technologies. Step comprises a set of formats which formalize models used in different PLM areas as NC, electric Kirkwitz, PDM and so on. Geometric and topological format was firstly developed for the drone AP203 and AP214 schemas and now is used in new AP242 schema. ODA Step SDK provides SDI access to all Step schemas. ODA Step SDK doesn't use statically generated classes as IFC SDK does. Clients using Step will work with dynamically created instances according to initialized Express schema. Such dynamic approach allows to work with custom express schemas, but the main focus of our development has been on the standard application protocols, as API 242 and schemas listed on the screen. All schemas have been tested together with derived attributes and where rules interpretation where it was possible. Step geometric and topological part is described within ISO 10303 part 42 and is the same for all application protocols. Step visualization is quite similar to our IFC visualization and is based on ODA core geometrical library. It uses object model of part 42, so we have a visualization of both faceted and bereaved geometry. The format AP242 includes product manufacturing information or PMI data. This makes this format self-sufficient for all documentation needs. ODA Step SDK fully supports visualization of such PMI data, including dimensions and text. ODA Step SDK supports visualization of Step XML or Step X files, which are based on the main model express schema and contain information about external references to Step files of parts which form an assembly. Step files can be visualized in standard ODA viewer, a universal viewer for all ODA supported file formats. Later this year, we will release a dedicated viewer for Step files called Open Step Viewer. It will be available for Windows, Mac and Linux platforms and will support visualization for all supported Step formats. It will also include convenient plugins framework with standard plugins for model statistics, model investigation and validation. SDK is the start of a broader ODA effort to provide open access to all mechanical engineering design data. Our new Mechanical CAD SDK consists of toolkits for all major proprietary 3D mechanical formats, including SolidWork, SolidEdge, CATIA and others. These formats will be integrated into the ODA platform to provide access to model structure, properties, BREPs, meshes and PMI data. You'll be able to import these formats into any application, visualize them, inspect the model hierarchy and properties, publish the models to PDF and more. Work on our Mechanical CAD SDK is being funded by a group of ODA member companies who are part of our new Mechanical CAD Strategic Interoperability Group. We have more information about the Mechanical CAD Strategic Interoperability Group on our website, including an initial roadmap and information about how to join. If you'd like to take control of your access to proprietary 3D mechanical data, Join us on the Mechanical CAD Strategic Interoperability Group. While we are just getting started with the new Mechanical CAD SIG, our Strategic Interoperability Group for the BIM domain have been delivering key technologies for Revit and Navis work files for nearly 10 years. BeamRV is ODA standalone toolkits for the import, visualization and creation of Revit models. BeamRV includes support for the latest 2023 Revit file format, along with API enhancement that provide full access to 2023 data. Older files from version 2015 onwards are automatically converted to the latest 2023 version during loading, 
giving client application consistent access to data regardless of the underlying file version. BeamRV can also write files to the 2023 format. BeamRV has a large and growing user base, and we are investing significant resources into ongoing improvements to the public API and more extensive support for element creation and editing. The next member case demonstrates integration of BeamRV SDK in SAFE Software's data integration platform. Hello, I'm Aiden on behalf of SAFE Software. Our mission is to help our customers get maximum value out of their data. And as founding members of the ODA since 1998, We've made heavy use of ODA libraries in our data integration platform, FME, to accomplish that mission. The ODA drawing and civil SDKs have allowed our users all over the world to get their data in and out of DWG files. The DGN SDK does the same for DGN files. And more recently, we've been expanding our use of the BIMRV SDK, allowing our users to unlock the data in their Revit files. Validating the accuracy, clarity, and correctness of CAD files is necessary to mitigate any project defects and ensure that standards are met throughout the project. Maybe our users in local, regional, and federal governments rely on FME to ensure these standards are enforced. By using ODA libraries, our software reads in all the data contained in CAD files submitted by the engineers and architects who produce them. This data can then be automatically checked to ensure it meets the standards unique to the organization that is receiving the data. Thanks to ODA libraries, we can extract and validate the values of parameters and element geometry for correctness. The list of potential things to check is as varied as the data itself, but some of the things our users look for include parcel boundaries forming closed shapes, all required parameters per the standard having a value set, parcels and boundaries having correct areas compared to what is reported in parameter values, and georeferencing points being present and correct. Our users are also often concerned with validating metadata about the files themselves, something that we also leverage ODA libraries for. These can include the size of drawings matching the standard for displaying purposes, uniform fonts and colors used throughout the drawing, the drawing scale matching the rest of the drawings in the project. Obviously, there is so much more data that can be validated using ODA libraries, but we don't have time to cover them all. Thanks to these validation efforts, however, our users are well equipped to reduce the effects of garbage in, garbage out. To further the idea of validation, we can look at specific use case from a municipal government located quite close to SAFE's headquarters. The team in charge of maintaining and improving the city's infrastructure like pipes, water mains, and roads receives many CAD drawings and other data in all forms, and the huge amount of work required to check over this data was overwhelming. It's very important for them to stay on top of this data. It contains key information like maintenance schedules, part lifetimes, and materials used. They decided to adopt the Master Municipal Construction Document standard, which is based on Civil 3D, as a requirement for their incoming and in-house data. Using FME as part of their automated drawing submission process, the team was able to completely eliminate the need for manual review and improve their data quality across the board. FME, of course, relies heavily on the ODA Civil and Drawings SDK to accomplish this. The sheer amount of information that can be accessed in a file using ODA libraries gives our users complete control over what parameters, geometries, and settings should be checked for correctness. Finally, some information about how the BIM RV SDK is proving invaluable to our users. As you may be aware, there are many initiatives for uniformizing BIM models all around Europe. One such example being the Information Delivery Standard, or ILS. This standard enforces a set of rules for BIM models that can ensure they can be seamlessly shared between companies and interested parties without confusion. In the near future, companies will have to create ILS-compliant models before they can be accepted in other contexts. Our users are leveraging our ever-growing BIM support powered by the BIM RV SDK to validate their files and ensure that they meet these standards making it a cornerstone of creating these files from the get-go. Rules such as all walls should have a fire rating or door offsets should not exceed 10 centimeters to be accessible to those with a disability become trivial to check with the rich parameter and geometry reading support that BIMRV provides FME and our users. 
file reading and visualization are in production state and are heavily used by ODM members. BMAV can visualize all the Revit elements that contain geometry. It supports materials that contain data for different visual styles, like cut and fill patterns, textures, colors, and so on. BMAV can also draw plane and section views, as well as annotation elements. The geometry for those elements is not stored in the file explicitly, rather BMAV generates it on the fly. We also implemented generation and visualization of the cable tray geometry for fire and load, basing on the same on-the-fly generation principle. BMAV supports different visual styles for Revit files. This year, we improved consistent colors visual style, which uses material settings for shaded style but excludes lighting, added the ability to draw foreground and background field patterns, implemented support for all the rights in visualization. Thus, for an element or group of elements, we can override color, material, transparency, and etc. Improved room visualization by supporting interior field geometry is created by cutting out the internal bureau geometry of the room. Shadows normally do not store data internally, but have rules and settings to obtain data from elements. Last year, we implemented the initial version of data collection for shadows. This year, we significantly improved it by adding support for images, shadow splitting, row color, table background, use of rebar numbering, and etc. We implemented different shadow behavior in the view and on the sheet. For example, a table draws images on the sheet but names of images appear on the shadow view. We also implemented support for keynote legends on the sheet and visualization for panel shadows. Creating new Revit elements and modifying existing ones is another major area of BMAV functionality. BMAV can create elements of several types, create family templates, update family geometry by family type, import family into a model database, and restore imported family. BMAV can create the following types of elements. Curve elements, direct shape and freeform elements, materials, side surfaces, basic walls, floors, connectors, different views, text nodes, custom parameters and their instances. This year, we implemented the ability to create the following new elements. Grids, including line, arc and multi-segment. Dimensions, including linear, alignment, arc alignment, arc length, radial, angular, and reference planes. For families, BMAV can create basic elements for family geometry. All forms elements and their void form, family geom combination, openings in host elements in a family file, and dimensions and reference plane elements. We also added the ability to create several family templates. In addition to family creation, ODA members need the ability to update geometry by family type. A family contains geometry only for the active type. If family type is changed, BMAV needs to update the geometry of the family. This is a complex process that involves ODA constraints solver. The current implementation works, but has the following restrictions. Parameters must not use formulas, as BMAV is not able to translate them yet. Elements must be of types which can be created by BMAV. We will continue to work on full family creation support. For families input, BMAV can do the following. Input a family into a model of family database and create an internal family database. Create new family symbols during input. Activate the symbol for the active family type. Activate other symbols if it is possible to rebuild the geometry of the family. Create new family instances for activated symbols. We implemented the added family method. It restores an imported family and returns its database so it can be saved in a separate IFA file. Over the past year, we significantly expanded 
our IFC export functionality for Revit files. Edit, calculation and export of IFC common property sets and IFC quantities. Edit, export of BMAV parameters as IFC property sets. Edit support for loading of external property sets from XML and edit export of classifications. We also implemented the export to IFC4 format for triangulated phase set, polygonal phase set and advanced prep geometry representation types. Our second BIM product developed using the SIG program is our BIM NV toolkit for Navisworks files. There are three main file formats used by Navisworks, NWC, NWD, and NWF. These formats integrate various projects in various file formats into a single file. In addition to geometry and properties, a Navisworks file may contain clash results, annotation, sectioning, and so on. This year, BIMNV added support for timeliner, animation, plotting geometry, and point cloud data. Memory optimization and partial loading was implemented to support large files. In addition, BIMNV can now save any format supported by ODA to NWD with a full hierarchical model structure. Hello, I'm Matthew Osman. I am the product director at 3D Repo. I just want to thank ODA for having us on for this brief presentation uh, into 3D Repo, what it does and, and why we set it up in the first place. So uh, a quick introduction, 3D Repo is a cloud-based tool for managing BIM data. The platform is designed to help users collaborate easily on BIM projects and manage not just the 3D geometry, but also the, the underlying data. So first, a little reason why we started 3D Repo in the first place, we believe that BIM software is too complex, and with that complexity comes knowledge silos. And those knowledge silos can struggle to interoperate. And uh, we also believe that data should be accessible with no proprietary data lock-in. So 3D Repo is committed to supporting as many different formats as possible, both open and proprietary. And every project is different, um, and I'm sure many of you who have worked in construction <laughs> understand that point. Um, so a little bit about how it works. 3D Repo processes 3D models via a range of libraries, including the ODA libraries for Navisworks, Revit, and DGN, as you can see in that top left corner. We break down files into a database format, which allows us to split the storage of model elements and met metadata so they can be queried either together or independently. Once that data is in the 3D Repo cloud, but we also offer private deployments and own cloud hosting, you can access the game engine optimized assets via Unity or Unreal, or utilize one of the 3D Repo created applications with 3 repoio being our, our flagship application. Not only can you access the data via the 3D, Re 3D Repo developed front ends, you can also use our APIs to push and pull data from any other platform that utilizes APIs. Some examples of this are pulling all of the metadata out of a model to analyze it in Power BI, or syncing our safety-based risks with uh, SharePoint lists. And I'm gonna go into safety base a little bit in, in a little while. Uh, you can also combine uh, data from our server with our model viewer API to build your own web-based 3D applications. Uh, so here are a few of the tools we've made available in our 3D Repo IO platform. So we've got the standards like issue tracking, we've got safety base, which is our health and safety risk management platform. We also can bring in 4D sequences from Synchro and we have a proprietary patented uh, 3D diffing technology. To take a bit of a deep dive into safety base, uh, we take advantage of the easy to understand nature of 3D models to report, track and mitigate risks both during the design and construction phases of a project. Um, by adding pins and descriptions directly into the model, you can involve more stakeholders, which is proven to capture more risks as you're, you're leveraging the experience of the professionals who uh, will be working and interacting with the site the most and have also got the most experience of working on previous sites. Uh, we worked in partnership with uh, Discovering Safety to comply with PAS 1192 part six. And this is just an example of how the core platform of Fui Repo can be leveraged uh, for specific use cases. Uh, turning to model validation now, 
by linking up our API with common data environments such as ASI and ProjectWise, we're able to pull models into 3D Repo automatically and run rules-based um, validation on the content of the metadata. So here we're showing a rule set which is identifying the absence of the design ID field in the models, in particular in doors in this instance, so any doors that don't have the required design ID field. Uh, once we've identified that there are a significant number of doors without this particular attribute, we can review the information in the, in the browser. We can start to pick up uh, all of the other rule sets that have been reviewed on the project, and we can raise issues and assign them directly to the, the author of the, the particular model. Uh, and then to finish, a quick overview of how data-driven approach to model storage um, can help with regards to embodied carbon visualization. Here we're seeing the 3D Repo model viewer embedded inside Power BI with embodied carbon data imported from a third-party library and applied to the model elements. So live in real time, you can navigate that model, interact with the charts and have the model filter and, and change color accordingly. By integrating with Power BI in this way, both the 3D model and the carbon data source are free to be updated independently of each other, with the end result being a simple to understand dashboard which can be distributed in the browser. So hopefully that was a, a, a quick taster of 3D Repo and helpful to some people who haven't seen us before. So as I mentioned, I'm Matthew Osmond, the Product Director here at 3D Repo. If you've got any questions, just reach out to me. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, so again, thank you very much for ODA for, for having us for this presentation and enjoy the rest of the, the summit. In addition to proprietary BIM formats, the support of OpenBIM is a key part of ODA's long-term mission. ODA IFC SDK is based on our Advanced Express engine and provides SDI and C++ APIs for data access, validation engine, and support for XML and HDF5 exchange structures. The toolkit is widely used by a number of major software vendors. This year we've added a number of major improvements to it. <coughs> IFC 4.3, the latest new schema from BuildX Smart International, is seeing widespread adoption among software vendors. ODA IFC SDK has been keeping pace with IFC 4.3 development, so we provide official version of IFC 4.3. But we continue to support IFC 4.3 release candidate 4, as this schema is still getting new experimental features. We've implemented support for all IFC for the three transition curves, including complex cases of curve interpretation for count alignment, and sweeps as IFC fixed reference swept area solid and IFC direct X derived swept area solid, which take into account these composite curves, transitional segments, and inclination data. Our common test set for IFC SDK includes data sets from the BCI Rail Group to validate our new curves implementation. Our Open IFC Viewer plugin framework has allowed us to quickly implement a pair of curve and segments dump plugins. The first plugin shows a dump of curves themselves, and the second one supports investigation of segment curvatures by looking at curvature point data or at graphical curvature representations. All data can be regenerated with different numbers of sample points and then written to a text file. IFC SDK now supports the conversion of ODA boundary representation objects to IFC Advanced BREP. By using this feature, BREP data from any ODA product can be converted into an IFC model. As an example, this BREP object, originally in ACES format, was exported from DWG to IFC using this new technology. IFC SDK offers a new property set definition and quantity takeoff engine. The new PSD QTO engine allows machine readable information about property sets and quantity takeoffs to be attached to IFC products within a model. Files containing PSD and QTO metadata are available from Building Smart website as part of the documentation for IFC. These files can be loaded and used for property set and quantity takeoff creation in an automatic or semi-automatic way. Custom property set definitions and quantity takeoffs data can also be created or used by the engine. And our validation tool can verify that standard or custom property sets are present and populated correctly within a model. Our IFC validation engine has become more stable and robust during the past year. 
with an improved interface, new Express Interpreter features for the interpretable part of validation, and an extended set of IFC format dependent validations and healers. The validation engine generates an attractive and readable HTML validation report. A web version of the validation tool will be available later this year. A new review plugin was developed for OpenIFC Viewer and shows a model as an hierarchical tree. The plugin is based on low-level SDI features represented in the user interface. It supports searching for instances by handle, selection based on is instance of and is kind of filters and more, and is a powerful new tool for exploring IFC models. The new editing support includes deletion of IFC product derived instances together with their geometrical representations and cloning of instance subtrees within the same or other models. In addition, we are planning to implement support for the creation of merged or federated models later this year. With the growing popularity of smart buildings, smart cities, digital twins, there is an increased demand for future-proof standards and solutions. ODA is actively participating in work organized by Building Smart International to shape the future of Open BIM. Next, we have a panel discussion that shares some thoughts and insights about the upcoming IFC 5 standard. We are presenting a condensed version of this discussion as part of our summit today. It's well worth your time to check out the full version available on our YouTube channel. two primary things, both from a sort of data representation as a file or, you know, sort of any of the things that any ways you might want to store data, but also then um, in, in communication or via APIs. So we're certainly thinking about and looking for models that allow that to be done cleanly. And then sort of the big picture is the, the, the challenges, if you will, is how to not lose interconnectivity between things when you start to sort of distribute information in pieces? Well, yes, I can add a lot of things. So if we look at uh, this question was related to IFC and, and IFC is, uh, well, to simplify it's two things. It's the definition of objects and the attributes that describe them. And then it's the relations between objects that constitute an assembly, a building, a system or whatever. So in terms of file-based and non-file-based, uh, there is no, uh, let's say, techno technical limitations of representing IFC data in, let's say, different uh, sizes, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, absolutely. You know, part of the struggles with IFC is that they're container, self-standing containers, and it's very difficult to reference external things like an architect might define rooms, but then you might need to identify which equipment are in rooms, which might be uh, main or designed or uh, have an engineer responsible for them. So absolutely transactions of smaller data sets and referencing external relationships is critical for improving what IFC is capable of. The biggest point for me is that we see that IFC models get bigger and bigger, right? More data we are, we're pushing into these files. And, you know, our focus right now is we want to take an existing BIM model and then create drawings from them or have some kind of derivative process. And so for us, you know, the model changes over time. We don't want you to recreate your work. And so super, important that we kind of actually can focus on the content has changed, right? So I guess now we have to kind of figure this out inside the drawing and maybe point you towards those changes. But obviously, if we can only consume a uh, you know, targeted change set, I think that would definitely enable a lot more interesting workflows. Obviously, you know, performance then becomes also an interesting consideration. So we're definitely looking forward to this evolution. What STEP does have going for it is it's a very efficient way of serializing data. So I think that's one of the reasons why it's persisting even through other more modern choices like XML and JSON at the moment. In our case, we want to load that model as quickly as possible and, and throw something on the screen. And I think there are definitely more optimized formats for that use case, right? But I think that's not IFC's goals necessarily, right? So we do see some efforts for people that are doing viewing only workflows, you know, creating other intermediate formats so that they can achieve that goal. Speaking for the Nemechek group, which is a lot of brands, the software that uh, really focus on open BIM as the kind of way to communicate between them. 
I guess in many cases we are not exactly using uh, step files or, uh, or express, but we uh, compile that to, uh, let's say, our, uh, a native IFC, so to speak, that is more efficient, that's more uh, like a database rather than a file. And uh, then we convert back and forth to whatever IFC is the facto standard when it's a file. I, I think also, you know, maybe some parts will move away from IFC and this ability of transactions and relating to other data sources. So, for example, serializing mesh or triangulated face sets in IFC is is not a good choice. So maybe there'll be more modern ways of expressing geometry that get referenced or linked from the IFC. And like Greg said. Yeah, and just to, to follow up on that point, if I would, like certainly the idea of referencing like modern representations like GLTF, let's say, or something like that for uh, for mesh representations is is one is something that has been on the table since early discussions, especially with the, the JSON. Um, to Robert's point, being able to serialize small changes in in more modern formats or different, and then to Bjorn's sort of point about sort of um, binary representations that are quite fast. Like these are all things that I think are on the table. The focus should be the shared data. What the data that is relevant to share between different uh, stakeholders or applications or whatever, and not necessarily be replaced as uh, replacing the native format in various applications. But having said that, we see a lot of applications that kind of use an IFC uh, as, as a foundation for the native model. And then they build some various business rules to allow better parametrics than IFC, uh, parametric design than for instance IFC does and stuff like that. But it's really a, almost a one-to-one -one relation. What we are certainly trying to make sure is, like Bjorn said, that the shared data representation is robust enough to move in both directions. One of the areas we are looking at, like from a software architecture standpoint, is a little more modularity at the, at the object level. So that means that if someone wanted to have their own business rules attached to those objects, it wouldn't actually affect the larger sort of components of the IFC data that is shared. So there is certainly, I don't know, a realization if we move that route that uh, that kind of using IFC plus some other business logic could be much easier to do in the future. But that's, you know, that's an opportunity, maybe not the first goal. When we made that switch to having DWG be the native format of our application, unlocked so many new capabilities, no longer having to worry about import and export, or rather working about how do we represent our concepts natively in that format, right? And so, yes, it is a huge change for any, any legacy application to switch their native format, but I could definitely imagine future formats um, you know, going that route. And specifically, if you look at, you know, we're talking here in the context of the ODA, you know, if the ODA provides robust uh, operations to actually manipulate IFC once it's actually, you know, in memory, then I think I definitely see an opportunity here. I think part of the problem with this area as well is it's pretty easy to show that some objects you can already achieve like full design transfer, like walls and beams and, and fairly, you know, standard slabs and floors and things like that. But if you start talking about how to capture the constraints and business logic of a stair or a railing or slightly more sophisticated objects, then it's going to take a lot of effort to try and get consensus. And yeah, so I, I, I guess how you limit the scope or identify the scope about full editability will be um, key to the success of this type of um, um, exchange. I think one of the key areas and we don't have good names for these yet. So these are my names and ways of thinking about them. So one is assembled data. And this is sort of a slightly harder concept to wrap your head around without some graphics. But the idea that there's a lot of built elements that are actually um, constructed from different domains information. And I think the other then is um, realizing that if you have that set kind of concept, then there's actually needs for different views of the same objects. So the idea that at a, you could call it a scene level or an assembly level there. If you look at GIS, for example, uh, even in my smartphone, I can overlay a lot of information from different sources. The point is, uh, it's the same also when you have a lot of stakeholders working with the built environment. You, you, 
we maintain and are responsible for a set of data that can be shared, but it's not necessarily stored in one place, but it should be shareable in a suitable format and that will probably be IOC. Model the same thing, so removing some of the duplication and, and just making it easier for others to adopt and use would be a great thing to target for the next version of the standard. I think it is interesting to see now with the Open Design Alliance making available IFC tools that are you know, broadly accessible, right? So we're finally moving away from this, how do we persist this data in this file that so we can read and write it? And we hopefully can get also now more, uh, uh, I would say, cohesion in the industry on how we actually push the data into that. But I think if, if when it comes to a data modeling perspective, I hope, hope we have a pretty clear view by March, I, I suppose. Growth in the renovation sector and strong interest in digital twins have made laser scanning and point cloud processing quite popular in recent years. And users increasingly need the ability to obtain accurate model of real-world objects like this location. However, this process is complicated and often expensive. Our scan to beam team is working in three directions. The first direction is point cloud to mesh conversion. We are leveraging the open source PCL library in this area, as it contains several conversion algorithms including greedy triangulation, Poisson and matching cubes. We are investigating these algorithms and experimenting with the influence of the various parameter values on the final results. We also have the ability to make adjustments and customizations to the underlying algorithms as needed. The second direction is mesh to be rep conversion. Here we've solved several problems, including the calculation of sharp edges, segmentation via sharp edges, calculation of principal curvatures, and segmentation via principal curvatures. Based on these results, we can compute canonical surfaces like planes, spheres and cylinders within a segment. After that, we'll create surfaces for the B-Rep and finally perform B-Rep building via surface intersection. The third direction is the recognition of beam objects based on point cloud data. This work involves the following. Segmentation of the incoming point cloud recognition of planes and based on that the recognition of walls, floors and ceilings, face connection recognition, and finally creation of an IFC file based on the recognized data. The second part of our summit is dedicated to the ODA principles and technologies that help to streamline application development. The ODA platform provides the same code base for different operating systems, the same APIs for different programming languages, universal tools for data access, visualization, and publishing, and ready-to-use customizable solutions for BIM collaboration and design review. Cross-platform software development has never been more important. Windows still leads on the desktop with a 76% market share, but it's common today to see an architect using a Mac. Meanwhile, around 90% of cloud infrastructure use Linux. All of us carry a phone that runs either Android or iOS.
and people today are more likely to access the internet from a mobile device than a desktop. 20 years ago, cross-platform was a niche. Today, it's a necessity. At ODA, we've been developing cross-platform technologies since 1998. We support all major platforms and we're expertly positioned to meet your platform needs into the foreseeable future. Our core software is written in C++. However, ODA members increasingly want to access our technologies from other programming languages. To meet this need, we use a tool called SWIG to generate wrappers for ODA libraries. ODA provides APIs for managed languages including C++ and VBNet, Java and Python. C++ wrappers are available for all major ODA SDKs. Java and Python wrappers are available for kernel and drawing SDKs. This year we added .NET 5 and .NET 6 configuration for C++ wrappers, which make them available not only for Windows, but for Linux and Mac OS as well. The wrapped APIs are identical to the original C++ APIs with respect to language construction, so ODA members can conveniently leverage our C++ code samples and their experience with our core C++ products when working with managed code. An important theme within the ODA platform is the use of convenient APIs to support common high-level workflows for data in various formats. For example, visualization and publishing need to be supported for all formats. We encapsulate the differences in various formats so that users can build applications that operate on all formats generically. Next, we'll see a real-world CAD application that uses the ODA platform to streamline development for desktop, web and mobile. My name is Robert Graybert. I am the CTO of Graybert GmbH, a founding member of the Open Design Alliance. The ODA toolkits are the core building blocks of our products. Today, I want to focus on how we leverage them to build new workflows that bring value in addition to the core DWG authoring experience you expect from our CAD solutions. Cloud and mobile are frequently seen as technologies that are aiming at replacing native desktop products. In practice, this is an evolution that will probably take some decades. But users are reluctant to change if they don't understand the benefits. So let me demonstrate what benefits cloud and mobile technologies bring in terms of collaboration. My presentation will fall into three parts. To begin with, let's start with an introduction to our Trinity concept. More than a suite of three products, the Iris Trinity is an ecosystem leveraging modern cloud and mobile technologies to improve collaboration. Iris Commander is our flagship product. It is a 2D and 3D CAD software running on Windows, Mac, and Linux computers. This version also is the one offering an easy switch to, for CAD users familiar with AutoCAD or similar programs. Iris Kudo is our cloud version. Nothing to install, nothing to update, it runs directly in your internet browser. Iris Kudo is the most advanced solution available in the market for online CAD in DWG format. Iris Touch is our mobile CAD solution for Android and iOS. Iris Touch is also no, has no equivalent in the market. It is the only solution offering a full set of 2D CAD features for DWG on smartphones and tablets. But even with a full set of 2D CAD features, the goal of Iris Touch is not to replace Iris Commander or AutoCAD. Mobile CAD is more than CAD on a mobile. And Cloud CAD is more than offering the same features in an internet browser. The true advantage of our Trinity concept is to use cloud and mobile to improve collaboration. Instead of replacing each other, the three platforms are helping each other, leveraging the best of what each platform has to offer. Indeed, the main advantage of our Trinity concept is to extend the design team to the technical colleagues, managers, and collaborators. So using Iris, you can consider the first group of users working with the Trinity license. These are the CAD users heavily producing drawings. 
you can extend to the second group of users that will most likely use RS Kudo and or RS Touch to use, modify, and share feedback on the drawings created by the first group. And with the view only links, you can further extend to colleagues and customers that will view and comment for free. This is the true revolution that CloudCat and MobileCloud are empowering. Besides synchronizing files among all the users, the synchronization is also ensuring the continuity of your work in all your devices. You could start working on an office computer, continue at home, and later open the drawing on your smartphone. The drawing is always up to date. You can see here seven practical examples of how cloud and mobile are empowering collaboration. But today, I will focus on comments and markup. Comments and markups represent the collaboration thread that is not modifying the original drawing. The comments, though, can be linked to a selection of entities to help understand the context, but you can also make comments without linking entities. Comments and markups can be answered and marked as resolved. With a filter, you can show or hide the appropriate threads. If you don't feel like writing a long text, you can also record your voice and insert it as a voice recording markup. Likewise, you can share picture markups to share photos or other types of images and link them to a specific area of your project. Finally, stamps can be used to mark up with some ready-made text like for review, and you can create your own ones. In RS Touch, the comments and markups are also very important to share information with the rest of the team. With these tools, the users in the field can follow the project and share feedback that will contribute to improving the project. They can also highlight some issues that need to be addressed. In RS Commander, the design team will see all these comments and markups in the commenting panel. They can take this feedback and use it to improve the drawings. They can also apply or create other comments and markups to help the other users. The voice recordings are in particular very interesting for RS Touch users. They see something to report in the field, but they don't have any keyboard to type long messages. So recording their voice is much easier. Likewise, it's very convenient to take photos with a smartphone. Picture markups make it easy to share them with the users without waiting to return to the office. Photos taken on site can significantly help the design team to react promptly to any technical issue. With email notifications, you can keep track of the changes made to your drawings. You see who is modified and when. You also see the comments, picture markups, and voice recordings added by other users. With all these elements, you can follow the project and react promptly when required. View-only links are URLs that you can create to share free viewing access with colleagues or customers. Using this URL, your contacts can easily share feedback and validate your drawing. To use a view-only link, your contacts will only need an internet browser. It is even better than a PDF because there's nothing to install. Besides, this link is always up to date. If you make any modifications, your contacts will always have the latest version. It's also better because you can cut access at any time. Please feel free to reach out if you would like to learn more about our Trinity features. On our YouTube channel, you will also find further videos. Thank you, and please enjoy the other presentations. OD Visualize provides an efficient rendering of different types of data, including 2D models, 3D models, and point clouds. Visualize provides an efficient and convenient high-level API that significantly speeds up the application development process. It is also possible to use only the kernel part of Visualize as it is done in drawings, IFC, and BIMAV. ODA Visualize is cross-platform and is available for Windows, Mac, Linux, as well as Android and iOS mobile platforms. ODA Web Visualization Solution uses the same code base that simplifies the cloud applications development. Several years ago, Apple marked OpenGL as obsolete in favor of Metal, a new low overhead, hardware accelerated, 3D graphics and shader API. That was our motivation to start Metal development. This year, we enhanced Metal support with all the major features of OpenGL ES2, 
our most advanced graphic device. And now ODE Metal support is ready for production use. In addition, we upgraded all our QT examples to QT version 6 that gives the ability to provide a more efficient support to Apple M1 processors based on ARM architecture. We also provided cross-platform support to our Open IFC Viewer and now Open IFC Viewer on Mac uses Metal. Visualize new features. Each year, we improve and extend the abilities of Visualize SDK. We added fast object transform functionality that allows tens of thousands of objects to be moved in real time. Fast object transform is used by our animation and explode features. We support a new cube environment mapping that can be used to create realistic backgrounds such as a skybox with reflections. We enhanced our anti-aliasing with subpixel morphological anti-aliasing or SMAA support to reduce blurriness for one pixel lines. We added a new reflection plane feature that provides realistic reflections onto planar surfaces inside a graphics scene. Visualize large files and point cloud. We see increasing demand for visualization of very large models, often in low memory environments, such as mobile devices or web applications. And the growing size of point cloud data has redefined the term low memory, even for today's top-of-the-line desktop and server hardware. To visualize very large models, the following general features are required. Partial loading support, which is the ability to load only a subset of a large model into memory at one time. Unloading support, which is the ability to quickly determine which parts of a model are required for a specific view, and to unload parts of the model which are not currently needed. And streaming support, which is required for web solutions. We've put significant effort this year into improving our performance for very large models. This work has taken two main directions, general 2D and 3D geometry and point clouds. For 2D and 3D geometry, our new VSFX format supports multi-threaded reading, partial loading, partial viewing, low memory input and streaming. This means that any user can stream a VSFX file using only native Visualize SDK methods. In addition, VSFX reduces file size up to two and a half times compared to the old VSF format. This year, we are finishing our VSFX optimizations related to large file support. Our visualization support for point clouds is based on the Autodesk Recap RCS RCP structured point cloud format. This format uses spatial trees, level of detail, and other features to efficiently process huge point clouds. We convert simple unstructured point cloud formats like XYZ and PTS to RCS so we can work with point cloud data in a common and efficient manner. The RCS format already supports partial loading and unloading. This year we significantly increased performance and decreased memory requirements for huge RCS point clouds. We also added streaming support for RCS data, which is critical for web visualization. ODE Publish provides a convenient way to publish CAD and BIM data to 2D and 3D PDF. It contains full support for PRC files, both standalone and embedded in 3D PDF documents, 2D drawings and their parts. 2D geometry, texts, images, UI controls, JavaScript scenarios, and animation. New features added to publish this year include support for geospatial data when exporting DWG files to PDF, improvements to block support for PDF export to reduce file size and increase performance, support for password protection and permissions, new watermark support for 3D PDF and improved watermarks for 2D PDF, which can now include true type fonts, pictures, and custom page positioning and rotation angles. 
support for layouts and named views as PDF bookmarks for 2D and 3D PDF, for simpler navigation in complex multi-page documents. And finally, support for custom bookmarks and PDF annotations or sticky notes for 3D PDF. ODA Common Data Access, or CDA, is a platform-independent framework for accessing model structure and property information in a common way for all ODA-supported formats. CDA is based on the RX Properties Mechanism, also known as non-COM properties. The RX Properties Mechanism is an extension of the ODA kernel runtime system. CDA provides model structure information as a tree where the specific hierarchy levels in the tree depend on the domain. This structural information can be used by viewers, for example, to display information about imported models. CDA property information can be used for many tasks, including, for example, the retrieval of all entities in a model that contain text information. This year, we made significant progress implementing CDA support for DGN elements, including database elements, DGN models, tables of properties, styles, and graphics elements. CDA support for DGN supports editing of DGN properties as well as reading. And we're planning to implement CDA support for all DGN elements. Project Management Open Cloud allows you to store and share project files using your own customizable web server. To work with projects, Open Cloud provides a rich REST API based on the BCF REST API. You can add models from authoring tools to the project and create issues and reports. Different participants can be assigned for collaboration work. For each user, you can configure access rights to a specific resource. For example, the user can be given the rights to create viewpoints and issues for the project, or you can only be allowed to view them. For more flexible access management, Open Cloud provides role-based access control. You can create roles with a specific access settings and assign these roles to users or groups. It's also possible to create and store viewpoints to highlight certain areas in a model. Using viewpoints, users can create nodes, hide part of the model, or highlight other parts. Each participant can share viewpoints among other users. In addition to managing user access to the project, Open Cloud provides control over access to files. A file owner can create a permission for read access to the file for a specific user. In addition, users can add permission to a group or project. In the latter case, the file will be automatically added to the corresponding project. Access to files can also be made public. The Client.js library provides a simple mechanism for working with files, projects, viewpoints, and access rights. Developers can also work with the server through the Open Cloud REST API. The ODA platform provides a convenient framework for design review of AC models. The following design review operations can be implemented using ODA's advanced set of ready-to-use tools. Import of multiple design formats, including IFC, Revit files, Navis work files, and TWG files with architecture, civil, and map data. Investigation of aggregated models with high-quality visualization, fast selection, and high lightning. Access of all model attributes. Validation of a model with advanced 3D clash detection. 3D markup to communicate project needs, collaboration based on the Open BIM BCF standards, and future support for Open CDE, and publishing of an entire model or parts of it as PDF or save as Navis works.
That completes our journey. We're back home in the USA. Our message of complete interoperability is being well received by industry today. Our organization is thriving. Our mission is becoming broader and more and more companies are taking on ODA as a long-term strategic partner. Thank you for your time and attention and I hope to see you next year in person when we bring back our live annual event.